if Iran somehow built the bomb, wouldn't that pave the way uh, for other countries to acquire, particularly countries like Turkey that is has been accused of pivoting to Russia, a NATO ally, uh, to find ways of uh, enriching uranium or acquiring this? Uh, and 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 I think that I'd be the the devil's advocate here by by asking this. I, I just clearly I'm. It will help me a lot in answering my students' questions. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll say a few words about that. Uh, if I had had more time, I would have talked about the domino effects of Iran acquiring nuclear weapons. And I think both Tutsi and Masa have referred to this whole issue of Saudi Arabia getting nuclear weapons. The Saudis have made it, I would say, unequivocally clear that uh, as Iran goes down the nuclear road, they will match them at every turn, and they will not tolerate a situation where Iran has nuclear weapons and Saudi Arabia doesn't. Uh, you raised the question, owner, about Turkey. What does it mean for Turkey? I think it's hard to imagine that Turkey won't at least seriously countenance getting a bomb. And just watching uh, President Erdogan in action, it's hard to imagine him tolerating a situation where Iran and Saudi Arabia has or have nuclear weapons and Turkey doesn't. Then there's Iraq. But we're all old enough, or at least I'm certainly old enough, to remember the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq war, right? They're not going to be permanent friends forever. Think Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and so forth and so on. The Iraqis will have an incentive. Then there are the Egyptians who probably will be thinking seriously about this as well. And I think if you talk to Americans, one of the principal reasons they want to make sure Iran doesn't get the bomb is they understand the domino effect that will come into play here. And just one final point on this, even if Iran doesn't get the bomb, one can imagine, I'm not saying this is likely, but one could imagine a country like Turkey getting the bomb simply on its own, because Turkey feels that it's in um, a dangerous threat environment, and it makes good sense for it to have nuclear weapons. Turkey, as we all know, has historically had terrible relations with countries like Russia. Turkey has watched what has happened to Ukraine. Uh, there are lots of, by the way, there are lots of countries in the system, Japan's another one, that have been watching carefully what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, first of all, Ukraine doesn't have nuclear weapons, number one. And number two, the Americans have not fought and died for Ukraine. And the question is, what message does that send? So anyway, all of this is to say, you do have a sense that the system is unloosened now and it's quite fluid, quite plastic, and independent of our discussion about Iran, the incentives for countries to get nuclear weapons begin to go up. Yeah, maybe to follow up on that, like we already have so many bad examples um, encouraging countries basically to get nuclear weapons if you apply this logic. So I think that's why it's important. I mean, I I agree with what was said by others that it depends on the circumstances. Like we all um, talked about the uh, yeah the military option maybe pushing Iran to cross the threshold and and the sanctions never getting lifted. So I think that highlights why it's important to get this one right because if if Iran makes that decision, then there will be more evidence for countries to to go down that same road plus this domino effect which in, in the Middle East, which might have to do with prestige also, maybe all of these countries won't feel the security need to get nuclear weapons, but they might just do it because Iran has them too. Just very briefly, and, and that's a, you know, that's a very difficult question, obviously. And some who argue that this domino effect uh, may not happen, uh, sometimes use the case of North Korea developing the weapons and South Korea and Japan, the US being able to continue sort of that non-proliferation. 
I do agree um, with Tuti that Iran is an important case and not just for the region um, that the world will be watching and that could seriously threaten MPT as a whole. And it wouldn't just be a, an issue of Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Egypt, et cetera. It would be a, a more serious issue of whether there is, you know, that the MPT is holding up or if not, you know, and there are already a lot of sort of debates and dis disagreements within uh, the MPT. So, it, it, it will have a it will have a major impact. I, I have no disagreements with that. However, when it comes to sort of the domino effect, I think we take it a little bit more lightly than we should. Like, it's not like if Turkey wants a bomb, it can go get it tomorrow. I mean, uh, look at Iran and look at how much it's paid with all the technology and everything sort of in place over the years. And and it's if if anybody actually, I think yes, maybe maybe Turkey and Egypt would be the the, the sort of on top of the list. Um, for Saudi Arabia, I mean, yes, you hear arguments about them buying bombs from Pakistanis or, you know, getting some kind of a nuclear umbrella or developing their own. And yes, they have been very clear that they would do so. But, you know, as, as we started the talk with, there is the ambition and there's the ability. And, and I think the ability part needs to be really seriously thought about of how much there would be, uh, you know, uh, the possibility for that. I mean, and, and then for Turkey, I think, I mean, Turkey is a NATO ally and, and it has a tactical um, weapons on its soil. So I think those are, those are something like you can't just, and I think when we constantly mention the Ukraine case is that, and, and that the nuclear weapons not sort of whether they do something or not, is that, you know, Russia did not attack a NATO ally. Um, it did not. It may in the future, I don't know, I can't predict, but I, I think it's worth remembering that. And while this is very, this is war is terrible, and yes, everybody's watching, um, I don't think everybody's necessarily comparing themselves to Ukraine because, uh, you know, they're, they're, in, they're in different places and there are countries who might actually think that the U.S. Will, will fight on their behalf if that comes to that. So I don't think it's a blanket perception that, oh, U.S. did not fight for Ukraine. So we are just like, you know, so that the NATO allies will just go like, oh, like we're in the same position and we might get attacked. And I think that very much is the case for Turkey. And so they would basically, I think at that point, have to make a decision whether jeopardizing their alliance with the U.S. and everything else that comes with it would be worth having the bomb just because Iran has it. So, you know, there, there are lots to consider. It's not just, okay, you don't got a bomb, let's go get one. And and then tomorrow, you know, have weapons in, in the inventory and, and move on with it. It's just not. And so as much as I'm sympathetic towards how much of an impact this will have on NPT and in the long run sort of non-proliferation policy, I just don't think it's that kind of like we should be worrying about sort of immediate um, domino effect in the region because they, they're just not that quick in, in terms of technology and being able, able to deliver them and, and, and everything. So it, it, it's something to consider.